but uh, before we get to clipping we just need to buffer our farm features that we added with the distance buffer so first thing we can do is maybe is click the deselect button to deselect our selected features we can turn our lines from polygons uh, off for now we can actually even remove it from our view so if you right click on it and select it to remove it we're going to be using the farm features buffer but uh, you might recall that the coordinate reference system we used when we imported this um, CSV was WGS84 which is a geographic coordinate system and our project coordinate system is Transverse Mercator LO19 WGS84 which is a projected coordinate system so if we went ahead and buffered this uh, using the distance field this distance field it would buffer 50 units of the um, coordinate reference system for that field, for that layer, which is 50 degrees. And 50 degrees would be off the charts. It would be a huge buffer. So the first thing we need to do is convert this to a, um, a coordinate system that, that is relevant to our project, which is the transverse Mercator LO19 WGS84. Um, coordinate reference system and to do that we'll just convert this theme into a new shape file and then save it using the new we'll save it with the new coordinate reference system so let's do that now right click on the the farm features layer and select save as just make sure you select the right format and we need to choose Esri shape file and we are going to give it a name, so let's browse to our project folder which is not there so projects for this example, where is it now? GIS tutorial number 2 do processing spatial output I think that's where we're putting it in our output folder and let's call it farm features Ram features, farm features, and it is TM19 WS84. Okay, so that's transverse Mercator 19, LO19 WGS84. So that, uh, that'll work properly. So let's say save. And now we just need to select that coordinate reference system. So we can use the, the project coordinate reference system which is the same. So there we go, project coordinate reference system. Select that. And that's going to be fine. And click OK. Alright, thank you very much. Okay, so you'll see it's added to the view. Um, it's in the same place, but it has a new projection. I'll change the color of this layer again just so we can see it properly make it uh, what is going to view nicely maybe cyan or something let's just see there yeah, that color should should show it nicely enough there we go all right so let's buffer this using the variable distance field so make sure that that is the selected layer in the table of contents go to your menu drop down menu Geoprocessing tools again. This time we're selecting vari the variable distance buffer, not the fixed distance buffer. So select that and make sure you select the right layer. So it's the farm features TM19, the new one we've just created. The buffer field, or the distance field, is break. And are we creating a new layer? Okay, we are going to save it to a file this time, so let's just click on these little dots here and save to file and let's navigate to that same project folder which on your, in your instance might still be on your desktop but I've got to go here, here, geoprocessing, spatial output and this one we're going to call buffer buffer2 for simplicity save
okay and then we click run and we'll have a new buffer 2 feature um, which hasn't been added now let's add it to our view so if you select the add vector button and then just browse to your output folder select buffer 2 and click open and click open again there we go it's been added and you'll see that uh, if I put this uh, farm features on top of it that different buffer distances have been used so in this instance we're assuming that that um, different farm features might be of higher value and so need a bigger buffer where smaller farm features, or not smaller necessarily, but less important farm features uh, would have smaller buffers. So for instance, I think this might be a water tank, uh, this could be a farm shed or a farm house. Um, if, we, if we actually look at the, the, the attribute table, you can see that the, the farmhouse and storage sheds are high priority, water tanks and this other shed are low priority, and some other farm buildings are sort of in between. So that's why we've used a variable distance buffer for those uh, fire break buffers. Right, so that takes care of the of the buffering. So far in this project, we've imported a CSV file. We have created a buffer where we converted a polygon to a polyline. We buffered that polyline. We then um, converted the imported CSV layer from WGS into a, a different projection so we could buffer buffer that one based on the, the units in meters and we then buffered that one and that's where we are now so that's where we're going to leave it for now in the um, second part of this tutorial uh, we're going to continue with uh, clipping